What's going on you guys? Welcome back to another video. Today, I'm gonna be installing the Max Jax portable lift system. Uh, I talked about this in one of my previous videos, but I think this is gonna be perfect for my garage because I only have about nine foot ceilings. They're actually eight foot 10 inches. So uh, I, I would have loved a bigger lift, but I think while I'm in this house for the next couple years, the Max Jax is the answer. So instead of uh, talking your guys' ear off about the positives and negatives of this, I'm gonna go ahead and rip it open so I can show you guys first. But basically, a freight company dropped off this big box with a lift gate and a pallet jack. This is the power unit that comes with it. Um, I haven't opened any of this, so I have no idea what it looks like. But Eileen and I are gonna tear it open right now and then I'll show you guys what's inside. So of course the battery died right as I lifted the top off of this thing. But this is how it comes. Um, looks like the two pillars are both in here. The power unit is in that small box. I'm sure there's lots of hardware. <coughs> um, but I'll go ahead and kind of get this all out of the packaging and laid out and show you the first steps to assembling it. We just spent, I don't know, probably 20 minutes unboxing it from that crate, getting everything laid out. And I just want to show you guys kind of how it comes. There's a big box where most of the assorted hardware is, um, lift risers, the wheels that go on the lifts, the manual bar stoppers, the hydraulic hose, that sort of stuff. Here are the drill in concrete anchors. That'll be fun. I've never drilled into concrete before, but you guys will be seeing that today. And this is kind of just power cart assemblies. If you guys aren't familiar with the way this thing works, there's a manual or a detached power cart here that you can roll around. This is what it looks like all set up. So everything requires somewhat of an assembly here. Um, I'll be following the instructions and kind of showing you guys how to put it together. But one of the first things I want to do before I dive into it is attach the wheels to the base of each post so I can start thinking about where I want to put this in the garage. I'm still not sure if I want to do it on that side or on this side. My only limitation is going to be the um, garage door tracks. Um, you'll see. I have a lot more room on this side, which makes me want to put it on this side, but if I move it too far over when I lift the car up, it's going to hit the garage door track there. So I'm going to play around with a couple mounting positions. These are portable, but I'm going to kind of be having a permanent installation for the most part. Maybe when I really know I won't be using them, I'll unbolt them and store them away. But um, I'm going to go ahead and play around with that. All right, so I just put the... Uh, wheels and arms on each side. They're obviously not bolted in, but I wanted to kind of play around with some positioning before I got any further. So everything's just kind of mocked up. And this is kind of where I'm ending up. Uh, as you can see, I've got another car over here with room there, room here, and I can always take some of the shelving down if it gets annoying. But like I said before, my main concern was this track here. Uh, right now it's basically lined up so I can raise the car and the, the body line of the car, nothing will hit that. Um, and obviously I can move the car a little bit on each side, I've got some room. But this is what it looks like from outside. Uh, I'm pretty happy with it, so I think this might be the position. I'm gonna do the last couple measurements, but pull the car straight in, and I should be just fine. The uh, garage door opener right there is exactly half the distance, so I'm still well within this whole half of the garage, even with the post there. And then again, I have plenty of room over here. And the best part about this system is if I think these are getting annoying, all I got to do is unbolt one, two, three, four, five bolts 
and it just wheels right out of the way. So super easy if it does get annoying. But I think now I'm gonna start actually installing this lift. So I just ran some strings across to make sure it's dead nuts center. I've got the outline, you probably can't really see because it's in black permanent marker, but I outlined each post um, so I know exactly where they have to be. Everything is squared. I think this is the final position. So the next step is to lay these back down and start installing some of the hydraulic fittings on each column, and then we'll start drilling in the holes. Okay, so then for this step, you're gonna get these three fittings. Um, basically, you'll just be installing them like this into the end. So it's the fitting here, the straight fitting, into the angled fitting. Um, and I've got some Teflon tape because you are supposed to use that. And remember there's a correct way to install Teflon tape. You want to wrap it so that when you finish, uh, you're not at that point screwing the Teflon tape end in, in opposite directions. So just keep that in mind when you're wrapping these. I'm going to go ahead and assemble this uh, and show you the finished product. Once you've got this all assembled, again, you want to make sure everything is tight with the angled fitting pointing upwards. Um, that's going to be inserted down here. Uh, so you actually have to, here, I'll zoom out, slide this column all the way forward, all the way up to the top there. Pull the whole cylinder back and then uh, flip it up like that and then down through the hole. There's a hole in there where those fittings belong. And unless you slide that top piece up there all the way forward, you're not able to get as much um, slack in the line. So these are ready to go now. I can just uh, pull this back down. Just like that. And we should be able to Stand them back up. So now you can see this fitting right here. So as you can see, I've got the columns in place here. Uh, the first pilot hole you'll want to drill is this one right in the middle. I've got my rotary hammer here, as you can see, with my 5 8 inch bit. Uh, it's a brand new bit and I've flagged off here the two inch mark because it says it wants you to drill a two inch pilot hole. So I'm going to do that right in the middle here. Make sure this is centered. That looks pretty good to me. Just want to make sure you're doing this exactly centered. That's about that two inches. I'm gonna vacuum all this out of here and take a look. Now I've got the 7 8 inch bit with the four and a half inch uh, tape mark on it because it wants us to drill this one four and a half inches deep. So let's see what happens. So I was on a time crunch and I went ahead and got this post mounted in. You'll see it's bolted into the floor with the anchors. It's all done. I did that off camera, but I want to go ahead and give you guys an, uh, an idea of what it takes. I still have this pole to do. So it's actually a new day. I ran out and got some more hose and some fittings and a couple other miscellaneous things because I want to mount this power cart uh, to the wall instead of it being on that mobile cart sitting in front of my workstation. I'm thinking a great spot for it would be somewhere here on the wall. So I'm gonna be doing a custom hose setup. Um, obviously I'll show you guys that towards the end of the video, but I gotta go ahead and get this second post mounted. So I'll show you guys a little bit what that looks like. So this first hole is just a pilot hole and you guys will see what that looks like. So 
since you're not really supposed to drill all the holes like I just did at once because they want you to drill one, bolt it in, drill another, bolt it in, drill another, bolt it in. That way you're not risking the chance of them not lining up after drilling them all. But I'm pretty confident in my drilling abilities. So uh, I went and piloted all six or five holes and I'm about to now do the 7 8 inch bit so I can drop the anchor in. Done with one hole. The next part to uh, actually set the anchor in the hole, we've got a sacrificial bolt, which is going all the way down into the bottom of this anchor. And I've got a nut with a washer positioned 5 eighths of an inch here. That's how deep it's got to be below the surface. And then after that, we we'll use a wrench to uh, pull back up on it and set the anchor into the concrete. Um, but I'm gonna go ahead and pound this in, show you guys what that looks like. All right, so the anchor is set down into there. I'll go ahead and zoom in a little bit. Um, and now to set that anchor, basically, we've got to put a wrench down on that nut and another wrench up on top so the actual anchor doesn't spin. And then I'm basically gonna tighten this uh, lower nut until I can't tighten it anymore. And that's gonna bring the anchor up and bite it into the concrete. Now I'm loosening this bolt, just so we can take a peek. Perfect. So basically, I'll take this bolt out of here to show you guys what we just did. We uh, initially set this anchor 5 eighths inch below, so it was down in there. I could have taken that off and showed you, and then by tightening it like I was doing with this wrench, that brings it back up, so now it's only an eighth inch below the concrete, which is right where we want it to be. So this is perfect. I gotta go ahead and drill these other four holes out wider and do the exact same thing. All right, so I just went ahead and drilled and anchored all the holes. Now I've got uh, the actual bolts that hold it down in here and these need to be torqued to 95 foot pounds so I'm gonna go ahead and torque all these down in a star pattern and then this whole column will be secure in the ground Okay, this whole column is now torqued down, and this is what it's looking like so far. I've got both posts anchored in. I've got this one with the arms installed and the quick disconnect fitting installed. So the only other thing to do for this one is to route my lines. Um, you'll see I have the power cart over here right now, and usually this setup wants you to have the power cart either in the front or the back and supplies two smaller hoses here, uh, these ones. But as you can see, I went to my local fleet farm and grabbed some of these, but I'm gonna link down below how you can modify your max jack to be more of a permanent solution because I already know I would get annoyed tripping over those lines. So I'm actually gonna mount this up on the wall eventually, but not for the first startup. Um, but I got some fittings and some longer hose, so my next step is to get the arms installed on this post and the quick disconnect fitting installed and then start running some lines. I think I'm gonna go up to the ceiling, across and down over um, for both of them. So uh, I'm gonna go ahead and do that now.
still got a ways to go. I just want to make sure I'm clear. This is my first time ever lifting this thing. Oh my gosh. This is awesome. First time ever lifting this thing. I probably have at least a foot to go as far as the capability of the max jacks. Everything looks okay to me. I should give it a... Oh yeah, she ain't going anywhere. All right, we're sending her the rest of the way up. <clears throat> okay, it's getting really close again. I just want to check. Oh, okay. Wow. Looking good all the way around. Okay. I'm going to finish her off here. <clears throat> okay, I'm scared again. Got maybe six inches left and I'm probably just about there. Still isn't stopping. Okay. Now remember, I can shut the garage door. I just wanted to do this test for the sake of being able to work on my car with the door open. I've got maybe two inches left. Okay, she's hitting the garage door now. Dang it. <laughs> just crested it. I didn't think that would happen. I wasn't expecting that. Hopefully no damage. I think it just barely was pressing up against it. I'm gonna go ahead and shut this garage. Now I should have plenty of room. And I can, you know, the next time I do this, inch the car forward, literally, one or two inches and I should be able to send it all the way up then. Okay, she's maxed out. All right, I'm just putting these uh, safety bars in and then I'll take a peek at how high this thing really is. I can already tell you, it's a lot higher than I expected it would be for being a low lift. Damn June bugs. A low garage height lift. Oh my gosh. This is awesome. These was great measurements, I think, on my part and perfect ceiling height. I probably have a foot of clearance on the ceiling. These things are holding up just fine. I'm shaking them. I've got a little post level. Um, I'll throw on quick, just so I can feel good about getting underneath. Okay. These are exactly the same as when they did not have the car on it. That was about as level as I could get it with my floor, which is well within spec. <clears throat> Again, well within spec. I'll give the car the good shake test. Yeah, she ain't budging. Not at all. I feel perfectly fine getting underneath it. So I'm on a little rolly chair here, your typical crappy Harbor Freight one. Uh, let's bring this thing down as low as it'll go. Okay, I might want to get a lower one of these. I don't know if you can see where my head's at. They do sell lower chairs, but I can already tell you there is so much room under here. I'm barely scrouching down on the chair 
and I'm able to get a great look at everything. So, um, I guess the next investment's just a, a lower rolly chair, but as you can see, there is a ton of room underneath the car. I am so stoked on this. <laughs> Long night of work, but I'm thrilled. I took the time to uh, hardwire these hydraulic lines up through the ceiling on both ends. And then it comes down here to the cart that's on wheels. I might mount that unit on the wall itself, but um, honestly, I bought this lift because of the low clearance height. As you can see, I've got tons of room left. Uh, it's perfect. So I'm stoked with it. If I ever need to move it, I can. It's got wheels on it. It's got the quick disconnect fittings. And I still have plenty of room to park another car. I know it might not look like it in the video, but once I move these bikes out of here, I had a car in here before. Absolutely no problem. Not even tight, like plenty of room to open the doors on both sides. So thank goodness I have a wide garage. And uh, I think I'll follow up with a video for my actual camera. This is just on my phone because obviously my camera battery died. But the next car I want to get on here is the 335. Again, there should be plenty of room. I'm thinking in the future I'll just inch the car forward. That way I can work on it with the garage door open. So I had a chance to uh, clear out my SD card, charge up the battery. It's been a few days since I've installed the lift. I've actually already used it, but I wanted to go ahead and show you guys a couple cool things about it before this video ends. Um, as you can see, I talked about this chair being just too high to the point where I'd have to uh, kind of duck down while I'm under here. Totally doable. It's much better than laying on the ground. But I found this. Um, which is a really nice creeper. I'm going to link everything down below. You can use it um, just like this if you're on the ground or it turns in to a perfect sized uh, creeper for under here. And honestly, I could almost fall asleep in this thing. Um, it's the perfect height to work on anything. Uh, I'm not bending my back at all. It's actually very comfortable and I have some leverage if I'm wrenching on stuff. So this is a must have if you get the Max Jacks. Uh, I can't even remember the brand name of it. Uh, Tool Stud by Whiteside. And again, I'll link that below. I already am loving that piece. Um, another thing I got was this smaller than normal oil drain. I think it's a five gallon capacity. So you can probably fill up about two oil changes or so before you have to empty it. But again, this thing is perfect height for draining oil. Um, it's not too big, and if you need to extend it, you can, but it's actually the perfect height. So I will link that down below. Um, oh yeah, and one more cool thing. This, uh, I already used this because I swapped out the rear springs. Uh, I had some lowering springs in there and I put in some softer stock springs, hoping that'll help my launch a little bit with the manual transmission. Um, but this is a, ironically, short, tall jack stand. Uh, I think this was from Greg Smith Equipment. Again, it's adjustable, but it's the perfect size because most of these stands come too tall uh, where you can't even use it on this max jack. So again, I use this to compress the spring in the back. Uh, it's also a good safety measure if you're working on the front half of the car, tugging on it to have this reinforcing somewhere you know, along the car. I think I actually might buy another one. I can't remember what it cost. I wanna say it was like 80 bucks shipped or something like that, maybe a little more. Um, but I'm probably gonna get another one of these just so I can stagger them if I'm using them on both ends of the car. But so far, this has been a lifesaver, um, and I'm looking forward to changing the oil with that oil drain. I do want to mention this lift. I know I'm going to get questions on it. 
has a 6,000 pound capacity. So I'm well under that with this car. I've seen other people lift trucks, Suburbans, anything under 6,000 pounds and you can do it. Uh, another thing I have seen people do is adjust these mounting points. So right now this bar, I'm not pulling it off, it's just the cover. This bar is uh, the safety bar for this highest level. Um, and again, this is uh, where I hold it. And there's another spot down here for maybe lifting it just a couple feet up off the ground. But Max Jack says you can drill up to two more. So if you, maybe you want one right here or here or you know anywhere on here, you can add a stopping point because it does have these manual stoppers. Um, otherwise, this is 45 inches of lift, so just about four feet. If you add the included three inch extenders to the pad, uh, you'd get, I think, 48 inches, so that would be exactly four feet. I don't use those just because it doesn't fit under my car without jacking it up, and I like that this pad fits perfectly under my lowered car. I don't have to drive up on wood blocks or any of that. Um, it's the perfect height. Honestly, I'm, I'm thrilled with it. And I even found I can open my garage door all the way, like I said before, if I just inch the car like two inches forward from the first initial time I lifted it. Otherwise, I can always lift the garage door and just stop it like one inch short. And again, it's, it's, it'll be all the way open. So no complaints so far. You guys might have seen since the last video, um, these come as 45 degree angles, so it kind of angles out, and then I routed it up, but I swapped that out for a 90 degree fitting right down there. Um, that way it just hugs the column, going straight up into the ceiling, and uh, I've got the same thing on the other side here. That way it just kind of removes some clutter of the line, flinging out. Uh, as you can see in this drawing, they just kind of fling out and then when you pull them up, it doesn't stay tight on that. Um, and here you can see that mobile cart. Again, I, uh, for now I've just got it sitting in this corner just so I don't trip over it. I also had to add these 90 degree fittings um, because they want you to just plug the, the hose right into that. I couldn't make a sharp enough turn and given that I'm going up into my uh, ceiling there, I just, Put 90 degree fittings there, longer hose extensions, and again, I'll link all this down in the description below because so far this is great. Not tripping over anything, doesn't take up very much room. Uh, you guys might have seen when I was lifting it, I think they quote 30 second lift time, uh, which can seem a little slow, but honestly, the amount of time it takes for me to jack the car up, get it on wood blocks, get it on jack stands, only to be able to roll around on my back I don't mind waiting 30 seconds, and it's literally a 120 volt, um, or a 12, you know, a regular plug. Two, 220 is not required. I have 220 on my compressor over there. I think you can get the unit in 220, and that might speed up the lift process a little bit, but just for sake of convenience for a regular plug, you can't beat that. Um, and lowering it goes a lot quicker. When you have weight on it, it drops down just like a normal lift. Barely any waiting time there, but I'm uh, I'm thrilled with it. As you can see, there is uh, a ton of room, and uh, I'm jacked about it. So that's all for this video. I'm gonna guys, I'm gonna keep you guys up to date uh, on how it holds up. So far, so good. Like I said, I've used it a couple times already. Very happy with the purchase. But uh, until the next video, I will see you guys then. Peace.